Hello, hello, Paige Evans with the Two Peas Garden Girls here today to show you how to use brads, buttons, and bling in a fun way. Most of my layouts incorporate one, if not all, of these embellishments. I love the texture, dimension, pops of color, and shine that they add. As far as the supplies that I used for this layout, most of the time I like to work with entire collections because all of the papers and embellishments coordinate. It takes the guesswork out and saves me time, which is always a bonus in my eyes as a busy working mom of two. In this case, I used the new Sun Drifter line by Studio Calico, including a few pattern papers, 6x6 paper pad, Ombre Aqua Thickers, and the font is called Goodness, an, American, an, excuse me, an Amy Tangerine Roller Date Stamp, Jet Black Stays on Ink, Black Mr. Huey Spray Mist, Tombow Liquid Glue, an American Crafts Precision Pen, Pencil with Eraser, Paper Piercer from the new Yes Please Stitching Kits, American Crafts Adhesive Roller, a pair of hearts die cut using a Silhouette Cameo, and a large assortment of brads, buttons, and bling from American Crafts, Basic Gray, Crate Paper, Pebbles, and Studio Calico. All of these can be found in the links below. Okay, let's get to work. I've gone ahead and die cut a pair of overlapping hearts from scrap cardstock using my Silhouette Cameo. On the cream cardstock background, I'm going to lightly trace the hearts with a mechanical pencil. To help define the hearts and make them more visible, as well as add some texture, I'm going to stitch around the hearts a couple of times in the, by sewing machine using white thread. Okay, so now that I've stitched around the hearts, I've chosen these two photos of my kids and made them black and white the colors, because the colors just weren't matching with the papers I wanted to use. Plus, I boosted the contrast so they'll really pop off the page. Next, I've collected a whole bunch of brads in different styles, such as epoxy, fabric, glittered, regular, metal, pearls, and jeweled, along with assorted buttons and acrylic flowers. Um, those are from the Sun Drifter collection. Now, I've taken a paper piercer and I've attached the first couple of brads using the paper piercer. And every two or three brads, I will turn the page over and push the prongs down. Any more than two or three, then it's just too hard to flip the paper over, they'll fall out. At first I was using the Tombow glue to stick down the buttons, but they were slipping off. So instead I just rolled some temporary adhesive on the backs of the buttons and then stuck them down. And once I was finished with the page, I went back and I added the glue to make sure that they would stay forever. Now as I'm going along adding the brads and buttons, I like to use different sizes. And like I start with a small one and then the next one will be a big one and then a medium one and a small one. I just like the variety of the different sizes and a rainbow of colors. Once in a while I'll have two of the same colors next to each other, but I really like having the rainbow effect and I'll just pick a different color for each piece as I go along. Now I chose the rainbow of colors because that matched the Sun Drifter line and I added some more colors too. And because the photos are black and white, I can pretty much choose any color combo that I want. That's another perk of converting photos to black and white. Now don't get me wrong, I love colored photos. I use them more often than black and white, but black and white definitely has its pros too. Once I've pushed in the brads, and after I've pushed the prongs down, I'll turn the paper over and I push the brad into the table or surface that I'm working on just to make sure that everything in the back is nice and flat. I mean, these are already sticking off the page pretty far, so I just wanna make it as flat as I possibly can. As I'm starting this second heart, I start at the apex, just so I know that there won't be overlapping brads or embellishments right in that area. I want them to be, you know, th those areas of the heart are sharp or pointed. So if there's just one element right there, it'll help to find the heart shape even better. So we're just going along, placing all these embellishments. And this isn't really rocket science, so I always love to have a movie going on in the background to make the process, you know, a little bit more fun. Plus I get to watch favorite movies while I'm scrapbooking, so win-win. Takes the tediousness out, even though it's still a fun process. It's not really tedious, it's fun. Sometimes the brads, the prongs are strong enough that you can just push the brad through the paper or cardstock without using the paper piercer but really it just saves time and it's so much easier to just use the paper piercer first.
all right, almost done. Now this brad didn't quite fit, so I took it out and I adjusted it a little bit. Scooted it over to the left, and because it's kind of big, you won't see the hole that it made the first time. Perfect. So now we're gonna embellish the top and bottom edges because there's lots of white space. And I'm bringing back an old school technique of torn paper. I've chosen this green pattern paper from the Sun Drifter line. And sometimes when I'm tearing, there's too much white space or the paper is too thick. So I'll just tear off that white edge, make it look how I want it to. And I'll go ahead and stick it up there at the top. From the 6x6 paper pad, I've taken this black and white striped paper and torn another little bit. And I'm going to tuck it right under the first one to create a layered effect. So this paper, it's kind of girly, but the color is blue, which is kind of a more masculine color, right? So it works for this layout about my son and daughter. Feathers are super trendy right now. And this is probably the first time I've used them on a layout. I want to get into the feather trend. So add a little feather pattern paper strip right there. This is the back side of the same feather paper. I'm just tuck it under there. I'm just eyeballing it as I go. If something doesn't look right, I'll just nudge it up under a little bit further or I'll pull it down so I can see a bit more of it. But this technique is really forgiving. It looks good pretty much any way you layer it. Okay, just tweaking it here and there. All right, time to go to the bottom. So I've taken this blue pattern paper. It's gonna be the first piece to go down. I always start at the edges first and work my way up or down depending on which edge I'm starting at. And the key is to just get rid of the, the corner piece so it's more of a hill shape than a rectangle. The six by six paper pads, since they're only six inches across and my layout is 12 inches across, I have to paper piece three different um, pieces to go across the entire bottom. Here's a lovely black and white floral paper. Coordinates with the black and white photos and the black and white pattern paper piece up at the top. These pattern paper pieces, since they're so colorful, they're um, bringing out the colors of all the brads and buttons and bling. In that gap right there, I'm going to use another feathered pattern paper, but this one's not as colorful. It's a kind of a minty green. Oh, but wait, here's another feathered pattern paper. This one's from the six by six paper pad. So the pattern is a little bit smaller. So you get more feathers in a smaller area. I want to bring in a little bit more blue. So I've got this aqua pattern paper, tucking it right there to balance out, balance it out. Even more feathers this time. It's a gray, solid gray pattern. And for the final piece, it's a piece of vellum. So you'll be able to see through to the cardstock, which is a fun effect. Got a little diagonal pattern to it. And add a bit of adhesive, tuck it under there. And call it good. So the next step is to add a title and I'm going to use the Ombre Aqua Thickers from the Sun Drifter collection. And I'll just start placing my title. I'm going to go along with the curves of the torn pattern papers. The title is Tough Love because I told my son Fox to give Jane a hug and this is what happened. He grabbed her face and he pulled her but 
She didn't seem to mind. She loves any attention that Big Brother gives her. For the journaling, I'm going to be a little bit carefree and loose and draw the lines myself with a black precision pen. And it just kind of goes with the flowy, carefree nature of the torn pattern paper strips to draw these wavy lines that don't have even spacing between them. It's kind of fun and different for journaling. You can read the journaling in my notes below. I like to date my layouts because I like to order them chronologically. So I'll go ahead and stamp that and it kind of missed a spot so I'll draw it in right there. And lastly, I want to drop some black spray mist on the top left, bottom right, and upper right corners just to create a visual triangle of some ink. And here we go. Here's another layout that I've made with a whole bunch of buttons and brads and bling. I just created a border around this die cut sheet. These are pictures of my pregnancy. The first one's with my son and this one is with my daughter. It's the opening pages for their scrapbooks. And this last project with Brad's button and bling, bling is a card. Here's your challenge. Frame a photo or other shape on your layout with Brad's buttons and bling. Every month a winner will be drawn from each video series and announced on the Two Peas blog. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned some fun new techniques and see you again next month.